Y'all already know what time it is. It's time for Scalpiana. Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, I'm back with somebody else's hair and guess what? It is another get ready with me, clink, 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 clink. I don't clink on get ready with me's, but it's the holiday weekend. So I know you drinking something. So clink me, friend. <laughs> I'm gonna do a QA and a in this video, but along with the Q&A, y'all already know what time it is. It's time for Scalpiana. <laughs> Every time I do a QA, and a I gotta be a new girl. Y'all see this? Oh my God. I'm not a straight hair girly, y'all know that. My hands are so ashy right now. Y'all know I have to feature a new wig and a brand new face. I like to be a brand new girl when I show up to y'all for Q and A's, you know what I'm saying? And this wig is absolutely stunning, it's gorgeous, and I wanna say thank you to Wild African Hair for providing this wig to me and sponsoring this portion of this video. This wig on my head is absolutely stunning, it's gorgeous, and once you pull her out the box, she is ready to go. You just do a little bump bump, and then that's it, girl. You don't gotta do much to it. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the wig and then I'm gonna go ahead and get into the juicy Q&A. First, we gotta get into this unit and I promise you, you won't regret it. Like look, y'all need to get into this wig. This wig, baby, the texture is giving very much silk press. I am impressed. <laughs> We're gonna get into this wig installation. It's gonna be super quick because this wig is ready right out of the box. And then we're gonna get into the Q&A and makeup. So. Just keep on watching and I'll be back. So of course your wig is gonna come in the wild African hair box and inside of that beautiful box, of course you're gonna receive gifts, a satin storage bag, some baby hairs, a satin headband, a wig cap, a uh, rat tail comb and a thank you card. And of course you receive your gorgeous wig. This wig is a 13 by six Yaki straight human virgin hair wig is 18 inches long, 150% density. It has an undetectable HD lace a new clean hairline and as you can see the hair is stunning and it's gorgeous the hairline a clean hairline means that it's pre-plucked pre-bleached and it looks like it came right out of the box they've already flattened it backwards everything for you all i have to do is get rid of those little extra bumps that you get from the box in the packaging so what i'm going to do is take my andis hot comb and hot comb the hair backwards i didn't use a wax stick i didn't use nothing I just hot combed it. Took my hot comb out and pressed it to a girl on high. Next, I'm gonna tint the lace. Now, I'm not sure if I needed to tint the lace, but I don't play by my lace. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the Calendary Lace Tint Spray in the color medium brown. I'm just gonna spray it onto the brush and apply it to the lace and then use my diffuser on my Dyson to dry it. Once that's dry, next we can go ahead and cut off the lace. We're almost done, friend real quick so what i'm going to do is take my any shears and cut off the lace as you can see i'm just gonna use the zigzag sort of me method and cut around the ears i know one of, one of the home girls said i don't cut around the ears i don't think i show it but i showed it this time the cap is a little bit longer on me so i just had to cut around those ears now as you can see you can wear this wig glueless because it has an elastic band with it if you'd like to wear it like that, but y'all know me, I gotta apply my wig. So I'm gonna use my Eben hairspray in the black can. I'll leave the link for it down below. And I'm just gonna apply some of the spray to the forehead, liberally, girl, just all over it. And then I'm going to apply the wig. Now, all we had to do was lay her down for a little bit. And when I tell you it looked amazing, oh my God, it looked amazing. You'll see it in a second. I spray the end of a rat tail comb just to get the lifted ends um, that are laying up. I use the end of a rat tail comb to get that done and lay those down. And then it's time for baby hairs. Now this time I decided I wanted to use my got to be gl glued gel to lay down uh, my modest baby hairs. That's what I call them. They're modest. They're teeny tiny. What I did was lay down these little baby hairs and I decided I wanted to cut them really, 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 really short because I find with this hair type, long baby hairs just doesn't look right on me. It just doesn't. So I cut them down as short as possible to give the illusion of just like, just, you know, mistaken baby hairs, like baby hairs that just kind of fell down on their own. So I did that in four places. I always place my baby hairs there and look, the hair looks like it's growing out of my scalp. Next, we need to just go ahead and melt the hairline just to get that extra oomph on it. So I'm gonna use a rapid strip as well as that wild African satin band. 
on top to lay down that hairline. Now next, while we let that sit for about 10 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and cut the hair. Now this hair comes pre-cut. So the ends look good, it looks amazing. But y'all know me, I like a little layeration on the situation. This is not a necessary step. But you know me, it's necessary to do too much. So I'm gonna take my Annie shears and I'm just going to cut down the hair and just trim it a little bit. I, I be trying to make it seem like, you know, I be knowing what I'm doing and I do, but I don't, you know what I'm saying? So I just lift the hair up away from the face and cut it. Now this part, I'm gonna do a little bang motion by doing a little twist method and then cutting it. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I had to fix that one side to make it look like the other side and it still didn't work. But girl, I was like, girl, whatever, I'm gonna curl it anyways. So I'm not even worried about it. Now let's reveal the hairline. It got caught up in my eyelash, girl, I almost lost <laughs> my eyelash, but that's okay. Now look at that hairline. It is melted down, baby. It looks like it's growing out of my scalp. All I have to do now is define my part. Now, one thing about this part, this is a 13 by six part, so it goes all the way back, girl. Nobody's gonna see your tracks at the back of your head because it goes, it doesn't go all the way back to the nape, but it goes like mid back of the, not mid back, but like top of the back of the head, which is great. It makes it look more realistic. Now, next, all we need to do is straighten this hair or style this hair. So I wasn't sure, y'all know I can't curl hair worth a damn i just can't do it i can't do it i don't know how to curl my hair so i have this revlon silicone brush curler there's a little bit of a learning curve with this silicone brush curler um but it is a good brush i love using it especially on my straight hair if i'm not intending to curl it so what i'm doing now is getting rid of those box bumps i didn't wash this wig so whatever the bumps look like in a box that's what i use that's what I had, so I need to just get those out. Now, what I was trying to do was get that 90s bump under, you know, like the curl under thing. And it actually did work, but it wasn't the vibe I was going for. But it was cute. Like, it was easy to get this look and this hair straightened very well. And it gave very much silk press because it still has texture in the hair. But it's very, like, silky, like a silk press. Now, next, I was like, oh, I want to give a little bit more of, like, the blowout sort of look. Now I just curl the hair away from the face and look at that girl. I didn't even have to go through in sections. I just grabbed a whole chunk and curled it backwards. I almost ripped this wig right off my head girl. But it looks so good. So all you have to do is curl away from the face. I grab the hair in chunks and that's it. Now at the top for the bangs, I'll just curl backwards and away from the face and look at the wrinkles on my forehead girl. <laughs> Oh, I was about to rip my skin off, but look at how that hair looks. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and set those curls with my Pantene air spray. Smells amazing, does a great job. It's, it's the flexible hole air spray and this hair curled so well. It looks beautiful. It looks like it's my hair girl. Nobody will be able to tell. It's really, maybe she's born with it. It looks gorgeous. Now look at this hairline. It looks amazing. If you are interested in this wig, of course, I'll leave coupon codes down below. We have a $15 off coupon code on all wigs and a $30 off coupon code on the 13 by six lace frontal wig. So use a mirror 30 for the $30 off coupon code and a mirror 15 for the $15 off coupon code. Get your money off, friend. We saving money this season. Now let's go ahead and get into the face. Okay, y'all, let's go ahead and get started with the Q&A. Of course, y'all know I gotta start with a headband. We gotta pull this hair back and show off the hairline. So, it's red by Kiss. It's like a satin headband. It's perfect for wig hairlines. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and toss it on. When I tell you this hair is giving very much silk press, I know that's right. So, for this Q&A, we're gonna do a little bit of a makeup look. So. We're gonna do a little bit of a face. Now, I'm not gonna tell you all the products that I'm using because it gets a little bit confusing. If I remember, I'll say it. If I don't, they'll be in the description box below. Or YouTube has this new little functionality where you see view products on the screen. You click on it and you'll be able to see probably not all of the products because they don't have them all loaded in, but most of the products that I am using on the screen. You should be able to see it. So, 
let's go ahead and get into the face and let's go ahead and get into the Q&A. Now my period is starting, so I got a bad attitude. <laughs> I'm hungry, I got a bad attitude, and I'm tired. Like, basically I feel like an infant right now. <laughs> So y'all already know, primer, same thing. The Bear With Me Prime Set and Refresh Spray. I love using it because I don't have to touch my face. I do not like touching my face at all. So. Whew. I do have a little lip bar package, um, PR package that I got that has some goodies in it as well. I talked about it in my last vlog at the end of the vlog. Such cute stuff, but it's like a little travel pack. I love that. So we're gonna be using that as well. So I'm gonna start with the MAC 24 Hour Studio Fix <coughs> Concealer under the eyes in, uh, in the color NC45. And around the mouth, I'm going to use the color NW45 to <sighs> color correct. And I'm gonna do like a reverse highlight thing. I like doing my highlighter and con contour first, blending that out and then doing my foundation over top to blend it all together. So, this is gonna be full coverage, baby, holiday style. Now let's go ahead and get into the Q&A. I asked in the community tab. I never really ask on Instagram because I don't know if them people know me. <laughs> you know, like, some people follow me here and follow me there, but it's kind of like a new audience over there, I think. So I don't know. I don't know, I just wanted to stick with the rivers and lakes I'm used to, so that's y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna use the Walnut Skin Stick Foundation to bronze, and then we're gonna let it sit for a second. Okay, so let me go ahead and get into the questions. There were a lot, did my phone die? I was about to say, girl, get it together. Tomorrow is gonna be Thanksgiving. My husband's not feeling well, so we may be just at the house rocking by ourselves. We ordered a fried turkey, and we ordered some other food because I don't know if y'all know, I don't cook like that. So, um, I can cook if I use my daddy's recipes. <laughs> so I asked on the community post about any questions. You could ask me anything, girl, I'm, I'm gonna answer it. Well, it within reason. So let's start with the fun questions. Faith K asked three fun questions. Girl, I need to, I need to put my bronzer on before this dry. Where is Faith K at? Faith K asked three fun questions. So we're gonna start with fun questions and then we're gonna get into the juice. Well, not even juice a mess, cause there's not much mess to ask me about, girl. I'm not messy. <laughs> but we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna start with a fun one. So Faith K asked, if you were given three wishes by Jeannie in a lamp, what will it be? Uh, three wishes. That's a really hard question. Cause I go back and forth between being like selfish and wanting question answer, like wanting something for myself and then wanting something like for the entire world. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The whole, like nobody to be hungry. Like nobody. Like everybody have their basic needs, food, shelter, all that type of stuff. That literally would be a wish of mine because I feel like if I'm rich, then I would want to like, you can't help everybody. So I would just want like the whole entire world to have their basic needs met. You know what I'm saying? So nobody's hungry, nobody's, you know, everybody has health care, you know, and I would want all chronic illnesses to be healed. Like cancer, like all those, I would want them all to be healed. Like everybody has their basic needs, nobody's hungry, everybody is like good. If you were given a mansion as a gift in another part of the world, will you move there? Yes, I would. A country that, they say a country that doesn't speak English. If you, one thing y'all don't know is that I speak a little bit of French, like a little bit, but I really do understand French. Um, I studied French all through middle school, like my, wait, middle school, high school, and college. So <laughs> let me get back to what we was talking about, girl. <laughs> I don't know how I got on that. But if I could, because it's a country that doesn't speak English, if it's a French speaking country, that would be great. Cause I would do, I would do just fine. I know how to communicate enough um, to, I know how to communicate enough to respond and understand, or at least respond a little bit, or tell somebody to slow down, <laughs> you know. How did I get on I Speak French? Yes, I would live in a mansion somewhere else. I would, I would do it. I wonder if my husband would do it though. How long would I have to live there? I'd be far away, far away from my nephews and my family. Oh, it's a mansion, I could fly them out. I'm not even worried about it. As long as my family can get to me, yes. 
she also asked advice for girls in the in their early 20s love with love boys and studies i'm literally 20. oh you're 20. i'm that's not all you're a grown woman love in your 20s i think love can happen for anybody at any age okay let me think about this in your 20s i mean the biggest advice i would give in your 20s is love boys all of that studies know what you want and don't compromise with it and what i mean is i'm not saying like when it comes to boys and dating and all that type of stuff or young men and dating i think a lot of times one one of my experiences is that earlier i learned this pretty quick earlier i learned that i was programmed as a young woman to figure out what a guy wants and fit it in to my life so if a guy likes something i like something or I figure out how to like it but i realized early after getting cheated on a couple of times <laughs> a couple of times by guys you know when they were younger and stuff like that they did what they wanted when they wanted to and they didn't ask me no questions and i was thinking like how come they can do it and i can't do it well figure out what you want in your life your career your goals even in dating and make sure you figure out exactly what that is so if you do compromise it know that you're compromising i don't think i think it's unreasonable to say like don't compromise it because we compromise a lot in life but i do think i feel like it would be important to say like i'm compromising what i want is this what i really want and if it is learn how to let it go or realize what it is and say i'm going through this for the experience and at the end i'm getting back to what i need to do but either way know what you want and make it clear make it known to everybody around you okay so they can support you and love you and if they don't support you you can let them go period i think one thing um i learned especially with dating I realized at that point I didn't know what I wanted and I was shifting and turning and molding myself into somebody that I didn't know so when I got out of that relationship I was crushed I was I was like beat down okay and it crushed everything that I thought that I was it was helpful to me because now I've auto corrected to a place where in my 30s I know what I want if I compromise, I know what I'm compromising for. And then I know what my boundaries are and I know what they're not. Being clear with your goals, boundaries, all that type of stuff with the people around you, you can clearly see, especially when dating, who really cares for you as a person or who is looking to siphon um, what their needs from you versus you having an equal exchange. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, hopefully I'm, ex I'm explaining that correctly. Practice centering yourself. That's what I'm saying. It's like a practice. Hopefully this is making sense. I've tried to make it like concise, but I feel like I explained myself for, for like 20 minutes. I think Faith had one more question. I know that you and your husband don't want children, but what will you do if you find out that you are two months preg pregnant with kids, with twins? I will be happy. I think maybe i um i think i've made it seem like we don't want kids we actually do want children in the future it's just not like i was saying um in the last question with prioritizing what we want in life um both my husband and i want really really full lives and we want to have children but it has to fit into what we want for ourselves first and fulfilling that and then after that having kids but if I were to be pregnant, pregnant with twins right now, the first thing I would do would be vomit, okay? Cause two, what? But also like I would be excited right now because I couldn't picture the another amazing father and partnership for children. I would be elated and terrified. I would get, I would give everybody the blues. Let me be pregnant with twins. Y'all, you wouldn't be able to take me. <laughs> Only thing I'll be mad about is I, I would be upset that I have a last drink. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna start with the Smashbox. Uh, am I gonna put this on now? Oh, I need to put on some blush. Dang it! I got this foundation on my hand, and I need to put on some blush. My phone's about to die too. Okay, I'm all over the place. C Boots asked, "Babies in the near future?" Yes, yes, we are hopeful. 
to have children in the near future. So yes, when, we don't know. Uh, but, I mean, we're not trying or anything because we have other goals, but yes, we do plan on having babies. But it's just, like I said, it's just not on the um, priority list. Are you planning on doing any giveaways? Yes, 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 yes. I have a stack of wigs over here for giveaways. They've had that little telegram scam situation happening here on YouTube. And it's been like, I don't want anybody to think that I'm doing, I don't want anybody to get tripped up by that. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to do it. I want to do it right, but yes, 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 yes. Yes, I plan on it. I got a stack. Let's see what you, I got a few over here waiting for y'all. That was Tiffany Jackson. So Tony Wells asked, how do you stay motivated? Um, it's easy for me to stay motivated. Even if I lose motivation, I am motivated to do this. This is my dream job. There's nothing that's gonna stop me. That doesn't mean I don't get exhausted, but it's so easy for me to just get up and do this. Like right now it is 9.39. I've been filming since three and there is never a moment in my brain where I'm like, I'm not, I'm not filming today. I'm not doing it. To be honest, I have a terrible relationship with the rest. So it's easy for me to just do. Um, I stay motivated doing this because I love it. So I don't want to make it seem like, hold on, let me go ahead and I need to powder my under eyes because it's starting to get real wrinkly under there. I'm going to use the Laura Mercier translucent powder to set my under eyes, but but I've always been a person that worked a lot. I have always um, overdone it. A lot of times as a society, we glorify the idea that this person is, this person is working hard, they're motivated, they're going after their dreams. Sometimes that person got an issue, like I do, where they don't feel worthy of rest. That's my issue. I, I don't know if that's exactly how I feel, but that's the only way I can conceptualize it at this point. I am a motivated person. I will keep going and go after what I want until I get it. It's easy to stay motivated when you're getting a return. Before I wasn't getting a return like that, but I knew what I wanted. Um, but now I'm motivated because I love this. I love this, I love this, I love this. And the fact I'm here, you know, in this place where I get to do this full time and bond with you and talk to you and chat with you and laugh with you and be authentically myself is like, oh my God, it's blissful. I also would just keep my head down and focus on that day. So if I had something to do that day, I focused on that one day and then I get that one day done and then I think about tomorrow, tomorrow. So I try, like how I stay motivated is also just take it day by day know what your long-term goals are, but like motivation starts in the moment. If it's time for you to just get up, just, just get up. That's the first step. Second, if it's time for you to do the task, do the task. Then do another task, just do another, another task. Also, one thing I do is I do micro lists. I don't do this all the time because my ADD won't let me, but I'll do like, my lists are like real small. So like go eat. Like I won't say film a video, I will say like, organize your makeup do this pre-film like all that type of stuff i'll make little micro lists so i feel like i'm getting through the day so i'll cross out every little thing so i can feel the accomplishment and then next thing you know like i'm doing the next thing and the next thing and the next thing so it'll get me through on those really really hard days micro lists are just like teeny tiny lists which is eat something drink water bathroom break go outside like once i do those little things and I add like on my micro list, I add like little accomplishments. Why didn't y'all tell me my hand was ashy right here? That's another thing to do on a very, 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 very hard day. So thank you, Tony, for your question. I Neil asks, you look so fierce. My question is, thank you, I Neil. Love you, love her, love her life. That's my girl, she's always commenting. What type of music do you like? What's your favorite color and your favorite foods? If you could travel to any place in the world, what would it be? So what type of music do I like? Girl, I love Ratchet, Megan Thee Stallion, twerk music, all that. And then I'm also an RB girl. So I'm a Beyonce girl, a Megan Thee Stallion girl, like all the rapper girls, I love their stuff. I love, I love good raunchy music, okay? Give me some I can throw it to. And I also love a good R&B moment. Like I like both, you know what I'm saying? Like I like the teeter-totter in between, you know what I'm saying? Well, I don't know the artist names nowadays. There gets to a, there gets a point, I don't know, does this happen to y'all in your 30s? 
where you know the music, but you do not know these people's names out here. Like these children that are coming out with music, I have no idea what they look like. I don't know their names. And if you were to say it to me, I'm like, who was that? Who? What? Oh, he did that song? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, uh. I won't even hear the lyrics. That's toxic, but I don't hear the lyrics, girl. If I could throw it, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> favorite color. My favorite color used to be red. Now, I don't know if I have a favorite color. Maybe gray? I don't know what my favorite color is, friend. I have no, I, I don't think I have one anymore. I'm just kind of like a open color palette. There's certain days where I like a good color. I would say neutral, because if you look at my office, it would be like a tannish, like this color. Yeah, maybe this color, if I were to say a color, whatever this is, what's this? It's not white. A crew, eggshell, pewter, what is it? But I mean, that's just me being a follower because that's what's popular right now, so I don't know. Y'all know I be following people, I don't even know what I like sometimes. Cause somebody else told me I should like something else and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I do like it, you're right. Oh wow, this Smashbox foundation is something. I'm using the Dark Deep Perfecting Powder, Studio Fix Powder. It's like a loose powder. I'm gonna go ahead and use that and set my face. Girl, I'm moving through these questions like molasses, friend. If you could travel to any place in the world, what would it be? That's difficult because I haven't really been to anywhere else, but I love sun, I love heat, I love beaches. So I think one place I had been looking at was Santorini, Greece. It just looks so beautiful with the water and it's blue. I wanna go there. What is one thing you enjoy most about your new SUV? Ah, okay, um, <laughs> um, I'm so excited about that question, girl. I need to calm down. That is from Miss J. Girl, everything just fell on the floor. I'm ex oh, one thing I love the most, I love the interior. If you don't know, I just bought a brand new, I got, not bought, girl, it's a lease. Let me not lie out here. I just leased a new vehicle and it is a beautiful BMW SUV like a BMW X3, I love it. It's my first like SUV, it's my first luxury car and I'm in love with it. And the one thing I love about it is the interior. I love everything about it. It's leather, I've always, like when I set up my, I got a car, I didn't care what car it was, I said I wanted, people say like peanut butter interior, but like that brown. That interior is cognac, cognac, I mean, girl, whatever. It's peanut butter. I love the interior. That's my favorite part. But the exterior, I love that it's so like, you know what I'm saying? It's gray, it's got like the, the, the black grill, it's a sport, it's everything that I want in a car. And I really haven't seen it. My husband said he saw someone else with the car, but I love that it's a little bit different. I just love everything about it, but if I could say one thing, it would be the interior. The gray on the outside is beautiful. Like I stand and stare at that car in the garage sometimes. Like I just stare at it like, wow. And it's all of mine for the next 36 months. <laughs> C Smith asks, what do you consider to be the pinnacle of success for a YouTuber or social media influencer? <sighs> I actually saw this question and I was thinking like, what do I consider? That's a really good question, C Smith. C, can, you, can I call you C? <laughs> Being able to be authentically yourself on camera and create a brand out of it. I think that is a, the pinnacle of success for me. Maybe not the same for everybody else, but uh, I don't like to say I don't have a lot of subscribers because I do. Girl, 75K ain't nothing to sneeze at. We just hit 75K, I'm so excited. It's nothing to see, sneeze at. But when people, when people look at a successful YouTuber, most of the time they don't think like in my range. They usually think, you know, over 100K. But for me, I'm so happy with where I am because I am authentically myself. Everything that I like, I do on my channel. I started this channel doing wigs because I love wigs and I'm still doing it. Things haven't changed for me because for me, I'm just happy that I started my channel doing something that I love and that I can be authentically myself while doing it. Like I did hair in my room since I was a kid and I'm doing it right now in front of y'all. And it's like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like if you're able to do this and be authentically yourself, I feel like that is a huge, huge marker of success. I feel like now I'm in a place where I can fully be authentically myself because I don't work at a job 
Corporate is suffocating. I know sometimes people say like, if you could do that, the money will come. It may not come as fast as you would like it to. Cause for me, y'all, I ain't get paid for years doing this. I have been doing this for, it'll be eight years in February. Eight years and I have 75,000 subscribers. But I do this full time. You see what I'm saying? And success for me at the beginning was I wanted to do something I loved. I wanted to do wigs and I wanted to come on camera and be able to be authentically myself and not compromise that and be able to get paid for it. And all of that is happening now. I didn't have a timetable because at the time that I started eight years ago, it seemed so far away that I didn't even, I just wanted free wigs. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was spending all my money on hair and girl. I would get, my husband would get a paycheck and I'd be like, sir, can I buy a wig? <laughs> like when the channel was there, I felt like I was doing it. And the channel's here now and I feel like I'm doing it. And then when I grow, the more I grow, that's gonna be the same. You know what I'm saying? So don't think I explained things correctly. Plus my mouth is dry, girl. I'm getting them foamy bubbles in my mouth. <laughs> So Jerte, am I saying that correctly? Jerte asked, what are your pros and cons of leaving corporate to do YouTube full time? How many siblings do you have? And how was your upbringing growing up? Okay, so my pros and cons of leaving corporate to do YouTube full time. Pros, girl, you manage your own time. You ain't gotta deal with nobody. If you're a social person, then maybe that'll be a con. But girl, you ain't gotta deal with nobody. Ain't nobody telling you what to do exactly. Like nobody's really telling you what to do. And um, the sky's the limit, technically. Like working in corporate, you get a check. Like doesn't matter how much work you do, you get one check. And I was doing a lot of work and I got one check and it was smile. But now the more I work, like if I work more, I get more. The opposite of that is if you work more, you get more. You see, that's a con. Because it is easier to defer rest. Rest doesn't have to be a priority because you know, like, as an influencer or somebody that's a YouTuber and doing it full time, you know like, oh, if I do a little bit more work, I can make a little bit more money. I could do this, I could do that. So you don't prioritize rest as much. I feel like I don't have as much time for myself or family. I'm always doing something. Plus, if your time management isn't there, girl, I ain't got good time management. When I had a job, girl, they would tell me when I was late and I was late a lot because I'm not good with managing my time. But now that I'm doing this, I'm not good at managing my time and it shows. Girl, I'm filming at 10 o'clock at night. And I started it too. So what does that tell you? As a person that does this, if you don't have good time management skills, you can end up in a loop of exhaustion and waking up late, not seeing daylight, all my fault. I've been complaining about it, but it's me, girl. I can get up earlier and look at the sun, but I don't because my time management is bad. So cons are you don't have, I feel like depending on how much, what you do, being a social media influencer, you don't have as much time being social. So you do have to make a social, make more of an effort to build and build and sustain community. And I'm being terrible at that right now, to be honest, like hanging out with my friends, all that type of stuff, uh, bonding with my friends. I've really honestly, and I hate to say it out loud, put it all by the wayside, seeing my family, all of that, because I'm doing this and it's difficult to link up times with people that have like with my friends and family that have regular schedules. It's difficult when I have a schedule that's kind of like this, my time management is bad. So I can't like, it's difficult for me to be like, Oh, I'm going to be done at this time. Or if there's an editing issue or something like that, then I just, the day is off and girl, I can't show up. You know what I'm saying? So I don't even like making commitments cause I don't like not committing. I have to learn how to be strategic with my time and that's like one of the hardest parts. The pros definitely outweigh the cons. Ain't no way I would. <laughs> Girl, y'all, like I say, y'all see me on a corner before I go back. <laughs> how many siblings do you have? So I have actually three siblings. So I have an eldest sister. I have an eldest sister, but I wasn't raised with my eldest sister. The siblings that were in my household, I have an older sister and a younger brother. How was your upbringing growing up? My mother and father are still married. They've been married, what now, 40 years? My parents were strict. I guess people would say strict, that's the word. They were strict and very, very protective. Very protective. Very protective. Mama, you hear me. <laughs> My parents are loving and caring and all of those things, but they also were strict. No parties, no slipovers, no none of that, girl. None of that. See, that's why I shouldn't do both. I'm gonna do blush. I'm gonna use the lip bar blush 
in the color grinding. Like no boyfriends, none of that. As far as like income, like I would say like, girl, we ain't had no money, but I really didn't know it as far as like our basic needs were met, food, shelter. We had a nice house, five bedroom home, um, South Atlanta. I had a lot of activities. I kept busy. I didn't have time for boys because my parents kept me busy because they knew if I had time, I would have made time for them boys. Like all the way up through high school, I really didn't do, I didn't do nothing. But college, we made it up for it. Yep, that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't like a lot of hanging out outside of going to school and taking your behind back home. What is your favorite? Oh, you asked what my favorite color was too? I, I don't really know, like black, neutral, red, girl, anything that shows up that someone, <laughs> be anything girl I'm so you like animals yes I love animals but I do not have any pets I've never had a pet ever my parents didn't get us a pet I don't want a pet right now because I don't like responsibilities like that as you can see we got no kids um yeah I've never had a pet I do want one but not now because I got stuff to do <laughs> but it'd be nice to have one like take a dog for a walk because it'll get me out of the house I do want a pet, but we just don't have one. I don't know, I think that's just an excuse. But yes, I do want a pet, but I've never had one. If you had to choose curly or straight for the rest of your life, what would you choose? Curly, all day, every day. You can wear it. Curly goes with everything. If I could have curly hair, big curly hair, <clears throat> I would choose it any day. Uh, have you ever played any sports? Cheerleading is a sport. I don't care what nobody says, but yes, I did cheerleading. <laughs> I was a cheerleader. I was a basketball cheerleader in high school. Was there any other sports? I did martial arts. I got up to what belt? I think it was green belt. Martial arts actually was an Egyptian form of martial arts. While I was in high school. So I did that and I did cheerleading. So I was a basketball cheerleader. Only for my last year of high school, I actually wanted to be, I tried out the year before, but I was in band, so I couldn't do it. Plus, I didn't make the team. <laughs> I had to learn how to do toe touches and all that type of stuff. But yes, oh, girl, I done exited out. What is your favorite drinks when out? So when I'm out, y'all know, we're not gonna play those games and talk about non-alcoholic drinks. Because when I'm out, I'm drinking. My favorite drink when I'm out is the same thing. So either I'll get a Chardonnay. It's difficult though, because if I drink wine, like they give you like the cheaper Chardonnay, I, it will make me sick. I don't know what it is, but it makes me spin out of control. Like I need to get really good Chardonnay, but really good Chardonnay out is really expensive. So what I do is I would just get a Casamigos Blanco with club soda, no lime, that's it, clear. No additives, no sugar, anything that's added to my drink makes me feel sick. Like I can't have citrus either, so <laughs> thanks 35. But no, I can't have citrus. Gives me a stomach ache for days. Maybe pineapple juice if I'm getting fancy, but sometimes they put too much pineapple juice in there and I'll be over it. So um, yeah, I'm gonna use, oh, I got a new uh, eyebrow pencil from Lip Bar. It's called the Exact Arch Micro Brow Pencil. Baby, black on company. Just, it's, it's better than the NYX. It's better than the NYX pencil. I live for it. Cynthia Brooks asked, I have naturally thin, fine, fragile, curly hair like you. Girl, same, here. And I'm terrified of putting any kind of adhesive on my head. I've been wearing glueless wigs, but they're just not secure enough for me. How do you keep the glue from pulling out your own hair? I do not use glue. I have never used glue and I don't plan on it. I don't use glue. I don't plan on using glue unless it's not gonna be harsh on my edges. I only use what they call adhesives, but basically it's hairspray that sticks, but it comes off with water. But I won't, I don't use, I purposely don't use any glue because I don't have a need for it. And I personally don't think it's necessary for your wig to look good. I I use the wig dealer spray and I also use, um, I'll leave links for it down below. The spray from, oh, forgot the name. It's in the black can. I just used it today. Ooh, ooh. The Wig Dealer Melting Spray and the Extreme Fern Hold Supreme. Love using these from Wonder, even Wonder Lace Bun. So good. My edges have been fine and I already have thin edges. I don't think I lost them because I do not use glue. I see people using glue like all willy nilly and I be wondering like how do y'all still have hair? because I can't do it. I just don't use glue. 
I don't use it. Uh, my battery's about to die, so I need to change out this battery. Okay, I'm bike. All right. I need to plug up my phone too. My phone about to die. Like, girl, the charger is right here too. I be so lazy when it comes to charging my phone. Shell Shell Beyond Beauty ass. I've been wanting to start a YouTube channel, but I also work and I have children and bills that I handle on my own. Shout out to you, friend. You quit your job. Was it worth it in the long run? Yes. <laughs> yes. Also, how long did it take you to really get into it and feel comfortable with it? I know making money doesn't happen overnight, but is it enough to just get by or can you really live off of what you put out? So yes, it's worth it. Um, how long did it take you to really get into it and feel comfortable with it? Um, it's hard to remember, but if you watch, I keep my first YouTube video up for a reason. If you watch it, I look, I, girl, I don't sound like I do right now at all because I was um, scared, okay? I was nervous, I was hiding my YouTube channel from my husband. I didn't want nobody to see I had a YouTube channel. Well, I started to get comfortable once I realized I could watch myself and enjoy it. So if I can't watch my own videos, I can't expect y'all to watch it. So it took me some time, but if I could watch my video back and not go like, I think it also helps to get good feedback. I got really good feedback on like one curly hair routine video that actually ended up doing pretty well. And that's when I was like, oh, okay, I get it. So it took me a while to get comfortable, but what I also did is I didn't put, I'm gonna use this eyeshadow palette. We just gonna do eyeshadow for kicks. Um, I also didn't put all of the weight on me being comfortable. I also put the weight on how can I improve my content within my financial means? So I started to do stuff like, oh, okay, learn how to film on the backside of the camera, of my phone, um, learn how to add music, researching other people's videos and seeing how they did things, looking at the tech side of YouTube, seeing how you could improve your content. And the more I found, the more I improved my content, the more comfortable I got. I try not to put all the weight on me just being me. I put it on like, do this and take it seriously. Hopefully that's making sense. I feel like I'll be running my mouth and nobody understand what I'm talking about. But I started to get into it by thinking like, I can do this better, I can do this better, I can do this better. The more curious, like I said, the more curious I got, the more interesting and comfortable I got with doing it. I know making money doesn't happen overnight, but is it enough to just get by or can you really live off of what you put out? So I didn't make money on YouTube for the first I remember getting my first $100 from YouTube AdSense. Um, how many years into it? I think like two years. Two years into doing YouTube. I got my first $100 off of AdSense. <laughs> and I was doing wig reviews for free. After that, um, let's see. I don't remember when the wig deal started coming in. But I was doing like free. And I remember the first wig deal I got I think it was like $70 or something like that. And I was stressed out. Cause I was like, these people are paying me some money and my video needs to be perfect. Girl, I was crying. I cried. So I think it was like maybe three or so years when I got my first paid deal, which was 75 bucks. Now this was back then. So this was probably like 2018. Right now it's 2022. I was going to stick it out with ever, with, with making money as long as it took because I love doing it, but I didn't have the same responsibilities that you have. So I don't wanna to speak to that because you have children and you're living a life where you are a person that has to be responsible for other people. And that part I can't speak to. The money that comes from YouTube is inconsistent. Um, it's not consistent and I would say uh, for me, now I make money I have made more money than I did in corporate while I was working in corporate. While I had my job, I surpassed my salary while I had the job, but I still worked at my job because I knew that the money wasn't consistent. So I waited for the money to be consistent for at least, I think it was at least six months. And once it was consistent for at least six months, then I was like, okay, if I can make my salary or more, then I can quit my job 
along with having the support system, which is my husband, then I felt safe. Once I quit my job, I was able to do more of what, of what y'all like to watch. When I was first working, I could only do what I could do, so I couldn't really fit in the things. You know what I'm saying? Like I couldn't really do as many videos as I like to. So of course, the more work that you do, the more money you make. So it was a good choice for me. The only thing is, my only advice would be, if you're going to do this, figure out how much money do you need to make to for it to be worth your time and for you to live a safe, secure life. But the reality is, I worked full time for years and I didn't see a return. So it, you have to really, really wanna do this for free <laughs> for a long time before you even decide to quit. So in the long run, it is worth it. It is worth it if you can get past that point, but you have to figure out like what your lifestyle is, what you need, and then before you even could, cause I think before even considering to quit a job, I felt like at in my 30s, quitting my job to follow YouTube for me wasn't a secure choice. It still wasn't at the time that I did it because it's not a secure income. Save up months worth of, I have to say, I had to save up money, months worth of money. I quit my job when I felt like it was a smart choice. Like you are making the responsible choice. And even then, I don't think it was that responsible. Question was, can you really live off? Yes. I can pay my bills, all that type of stuff. For me personally, and maybe some people had a different journey, I had to, I worked both jobs until I found out like the money was more than what I made for a long period of time, at least six months. And then I saved that money. Uh, Jasmine Duvane asked, do you, have you ever had any setbacks? And if so, how could, you, how did you overcome them? Like setbacks? What do you mean like financially? Yes, yes, and yes. I think I talked about it in my, I quit my job video. I'm gonna put on my chapstick. I'm gonna do my lips and then we'll be done. And I'll do lower lash line, mascara, all that stuff. But yes, I have had setbacks. I've had financial setbacks. I've had emotional setbacks. I've had, girl, there was a time, girl, there was a, I've had a few rough times. I think one thing that I don't have is a good memory in the like terrible times, I don't really remember. The year that I remember was the toughest was 2019. Oh my God. The setbacks, I don't even know. I didn't even want to show them on camera. Like what, like 2017 to 2019 was, whew, there was a lot that went on. I've had a lot of setbacks. And how I overcame them is I keep my head down. I try not to dwell on the setback for too long. I had a setback on this channel when I had to make a choice in 2019. I had a setback it, around that year. If you looked at my channel, my channel, <laughs> it dipped pretty bad. I was terrified that I wasn't gonna get my channel back. <clears throat> Am I about to cry or what's going on? It was a tough time from 2017 to like 2019. Like very tough time and how I overcame them is keeping my head down I never really I always I don't really think like things are gonna be okay or things are gonna get worse I get really anxious about the future but all I keep all I think is this keep your head down and keep going keep on pace keep doing what you're doing but I try and deal with what's in front of me like what is in front of me what do I have to deal with now if it's a financial problem how do we fix it <laughs> How do we get through it? And I do have to say, I, th <clears throat> I thank God for my husband because he is a grounded, less anxious individual. And I do think he is the person that helps to ground us in certain decisions when I am like, you know, all over the place and anxious. He's a person that's like, everything is okay. I don't know if you noticed, but he's very calm. If I look back, and I remember how we got through it and I got through it, but we got through it was keeping our heads down and just taking the next step. All I remember is like, okay, what's the next step? What to do next? What to do next? Cause girl, we had an issue where our ceiling fell in. It was completely wet twice. Girl, 
I just try not to dwell on the tough parts and I try and figure out what I want to happen next and I focus on that. Like, what do I want next? Cause this is not the end of the story. Like this isn't it. What's the next step? What do I want? And how do I get there? Create the steps and just do it. Just do it. There's no questions asked, just do it. <laughs> That's the only way I think of it. If you could give advice to someone like me, a college student who hasn't really begun my adult life yet, what would it be? Um, oh my God. That's so sweet that y'all ask these questions because I don't know. And I feel like this get ready with me is getting real long. I got a video to edit. Ah! This is a part of your adult life. I don't, I personally don't believe that adult life starts when you have huge responsibilities. This is a part of adult life. Figure out who you are, start to make commu build community and connections in college, start to create the foundation for your adult life now so that your future life is amazing. Sometimes things change and it, like my career that I went into changed, my friends that I went in, that I had changed, all that type of stuff changed from college. But one thing I wish I did was build more friendships and community um, in college and sustained it and also uh, took advantage of the experience that I had in college with education, connections, career connections, all that type of stuff. Remember now is the foundation for the rest of your life. And it's the fun part. So enjoy it, have as much fun. Don't put too much stress on yourself because there's no reason to be that stressed. I mean, stress is, I mean, it's a stressful time, but this is adult life. You're in adult life. You are, you're an adult, um, just a young one. And this is the time where you can enjoy being an adult all while not feeling the same amount of responsibility that someone in their thirties has with, you know, marriage and kids and all that type of stuff. You're an adult. It doesn't need to be validated by accomplishments. You're just an adult. That's just building. You're in a building phase. So build now, build friends, build relationships, you know, partnerships, you know, with people that you date, whatever, girl, you know, do what you want to do. Build the part of your life that you want to see in your thirties and enjoy it. Have a great time. Don't stress out. Have a great time because you're going to look back in your, into your college days and think, wow, oh my God, <laughs> what a time. When I look back to college, I'm thinking like what a time I had. Even the worst times were like, wow, what an experience. That was great. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like a different person, like a different version of that person, but I do wish I had more fun. Remember now that you're going to look back at this time and think like, wow, I did that. I did that. That's what you want. Look back and say, I did that safely, safely, but make sure you have a good community, build community around you. I can't stress that enough. Friendships, community, all that is so important. Don't just trust everybody, but like practice that now and then build your life. What's something that you want to do that's impossible to you and what would you do to make it possible? I don't think anything's impossible. Oh, that's a really good question. Fran, Jasmine, what would I like to do that's impossible? Not impossible. It's just something I'm not doing great at right now, which is, like I said, balancing everything. Balancing my schedule, my family life, my friendships, and my marriage, all that type of stuff. Balancing it well, I feel like that's impossible. I do. But what would I do? I need to get better with time management and being realistic and creating boundaries and being comfortable with them. It's not really impossible. I just have to be willing to do the work to make it happen. But anything else, I never feel like anything is impossible for me. I can do anything I wanna do. That's really how I feel. <laughs> I've always felt like that. So, but the only thing that I've struggled with that I felt like was impossible is balance my whole entire life. So obviously I feel like it's impossible, but I would, be better with time management and boundaries around work. I have terrible boundaries around work. Let me do my lips because I'm running my mouth. Oh, oh, Victoria's VKG's asked, will you do a wig sale or any of your old wigs? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I'm planning on it, but I just, 
time management, friend. Where's my um, lip pencil? Y'all know what it is, same lip liner. Uh, I want to do the wig cell in a certain way, so I apologize for the delay. I keep getting that question. Yes, we're working on it. I promise we're working on it. I promise we're working on it, but I like to do things in a certain way. I don't like to just, I'll just throw up a wig sale. I just, I don't know. I don't know. So yes, I've never done a wig sale before and I have a lot of wigs. So I'm planning on doing it. I just want to do it the right way. So yes, I plan on doing it, but I'm just, I, I, I'm in my own way. It's not, I'm in my own way. Diamonds and lip gloss. Ask if you ever decide to relocate what city or what cities. Um, I love living in Atlanta. I lived in Atlanta all my life, but if I could, maybe San Francisco. Maybe. Um, but I need somewhere with sun that's like not cold. I think somewhere in Texas, maybe. Maybe, but the state, oh girl, the laws, all that type of stuff, I don't like it. Maybe Vegas. I love Vegas. But I don't think Vegas, Vegas is like the real Vegas. I love Vegas though. So I would live in Vegas for like a, a short period of time. The reason why I would choose Vegas is just cause I like Vegas. But Vegas wouldn't be Vegas if you don't visit. You just would be living there, but I love Vegas. San Francisco. Um, I just heard it was pretty there, but I don't know, never been. Not exactly sure, like Houston and Dallas, like the big cities, love the cities. Never been in Houston, been to Dallas, love Dallas. Dallas was a great time. So I love the South, like I, I am a Southern girl, so I do love the South, it's just the laws in the South are so antiquated, it just makes you feel like, ugh, girl, like what are y'all doing? Hope this isn't too personal, but would you have been able to afford to quit your corporate job to do YouTube if you were single? Yes, it's kind of hard to say though. It's kind of hard to say because the reason why I've been able to do this in the way that I've been able to do it is from the support of my husband. So it's kind of difficult to say. Technically, yes, yes. Is this a look? Oh girl, I'm putting concealer on my lips. I thought that was my lip gloss. Girl, I need to get off of here. What? Although you see me in front of the camera, I've gotten so much support and help from my husband. It is extremely difficult to do this on your own. Like you need support. And my husband is such a great support that it is difficult for me to imagine doing it all alone. Like, oh my God, sure could, <laughs> technically. But this good, no. The support has been top notch, needed it. Don't know where I'll be without it, <laughs> gotta be honest. Hopefully YouTube brings you what you're looking for, but if it doesn't, what do you plan to do after YouTube? That's a good question, diamonds and lip gloss. I don't know. Um, there's, uh, there's, I think it's, it wouldn't be smart for me to think I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life because you don't know what could happen. But I hope to always do something with hair. My plan is always to do something with hair because this is where my heart is. If you can't tell, I love it. Like, I don't think you understand how much hair means to me. It's always been my safe place. It's the place I would go when I was depressed. I would be in my hair. So I would never let, it, it would be something with hair. And of course, other businesses and things like that. But I want to always stay where my heart is, which is hair, wigs, pieces, all that type of stuff. So I have a couple of plans, but I'm not sure. I don't want to say I'm out loud yet, but it's always going to be something with hair. And I know it deep down in my spirit. I've always known it's going to be something with hair. I got half a master's in clinical mental health counseling. I may complete that and get my clinical mental health master's in clinical mental health counseling because I'm almost done. So I can just go back and finish it and just get it done just so I have it. You know what I'm saying? Mm, let me do my um, lower lash line mascara. Girl, the questions were questioning. I wish I had a glass of wine, but I'm not. Dr I'm trying to be better with drinking because it's real easy to slip into a slippery, slippery slope. Girl, this foundation is everything. I try not to drink just willy nilly because of, you know, my mood nowadays. It can be easy to slip into drinking too much. So I only drink on certain days. So holidays, weekends that's it so shout out to the lip bar we're gonna go ahead and use their mascara i think there were more questions 
because I ask, I ask in every video for more questions and I need to go in just real quick and see what the girls is talking about. Oh yeah, like I told y'all, this is the Big Timer Volumizing Mascara from Lip Bar. It came in a little travel pack that they got. So good. They are really becoming like a full makeup brand where you can get everything you need rooted to the tutor friend. Oh God, you really gotta do this face because if you don't, girl, you'll end up with makeup everywhere. This Smashbox foundation is like, oh my God. It is like bomb. It feels like it moves with my skin, but it's still like tight. Okay, I think that's everything, right? Full face. I just need to put on some earrings. Oh, take this off. Oh dang, I was supposed to spray my face down. Every time, every time. Okay, so now we can spray this face down and girl, I gotta get, girl, it's 11.36. I have been, they're running my mouth. Ooh. Spray the face down. Boom. Did I put on earrings? Yes, I did. Because I was running my mouth with my man. <laughs> we was just out there talking. Let it glow. Okay, so this is a finished look. Look how pretty this is. I kind of want to recurl the hair. That's the one thing about this hair. It's not holding a curl, ma'am. No, not. No, it's not. But girl, it's the end of the video. And it's late. So let me quit lying to y'all. This is a finished look. This is the face. <sighs> Thank you to everyone that asked me a question. Did I have one more? I'm looking for this one question. I screenshot it. Kendall. Okay, I'm going to answer. This is the last question. I'm sorry, Kendall. Kendall, Amira, why don't you ever cut around the ears? I do cut around the ears of my wigs. She asked that, and I was wondering. I was like, do I not show it? I do cut around the ears of my wigs. I think... I show it really fast, but I always cut around the ears because my wigs are way too long. So I always cut around the ears, but maybe I don't show it well enough. But yes, I always cut. For the questions, how much time does it take to devote to YouTube videos? It takes, for me filming, like right now I started at two, I took a lunch break for a couple of hours and then I came back and filmed this part. So it took me, for YouTube videos, it takes me about four hours on average to film a wig video beginning to end because I put everything on camera outside of bleaching the knots. And then um, if I do bleach the knots and then for editing, editing takes about four hours as well. So eight hours per, per video and then maybe like an hour or two to add subtitles and do the title, the thumbnail, tags, all that type of stuff, link in description box, all that other information, that takes about an extra hour. So each video, root of the two to beginning to end, probably takes about four, so nine or 10 hours for beginning to end for my videos. Yeah. What were you doing before you stopped working? So I was a, what was it? I was a customer relations administrative coordinator at a luxury car brand. And I was a receptionist before that. So I got promoted, I guess you would say, to a new position and uh, about four, six years, wait, is it six years? As administrative coordinator for my department, I basically was a liaison between our account accounting department and customer relations. So I did a lot of the money stuff there was a little, a few administrative coordinators, but I did mostly money stuff. So does the YouTube gig pay well? Yes, it does. It does after you, we talk about work, blood, sweat. I worked harder than I ever did in corporate. So yes, it pays well. Everybody doesn't get the same pay. So it's almost like Learning the business in the back end is super duper, 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 duper important. So some people think like you get popular online, then you just make money. That's not how it works. If you learn the business first, then you pop off, that's a better, that's a better play. I never popped off. It's has been a very slow crawl. I've been here for eight years. So, um, and I'm at 75K, you know, having, having the privilege of an education, all that type of stuff has helped me Tr those tools in that toolbox helped me to figure out the business in the back end. But what I would say is if you want it to pay well, 
you have to make it pay well. Learn the business, learn the money, learn how to pitch yourself and learn how to value yourself because you can't get undervalued and before you know, you be working more than you're paid. How did all this YouTube stuff start for you? Good question. So this started by me one day, I was in the house, my husband just bought a new laptop and I was like, ooh, it has a camera. Once I opened up the laptop, I just bought a new wig and I was like, oh, I want to show it to everybody. So it was the Bare and Natural Sensational wig. I loved it. Straight, center part, very cute. And I just opened the laptop and I did it and I uploaded it and that was it. <laughs> so that's how it all started. It was every time I bought a wig and baby, I was saving my coins to buy these wigs. And then eventually people started to send me wigs and here we are. <laughs> yeah, so shout out to Kendall. That's all the questions. That's all the questions. We're at the end of this Q&A. Thank you so much for watching. I got a headache from talking so much and my voice, baby, it's going out. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, I wanna say thank you to Wild African Hair for providing this wig to me and sponsoring this video and allowing me to run my mouth. Thank you all so much for your questions. I cannot appreciate you enough. Although I work hard on this channel, it's still because of you in the community that we have that this is able to happen. So I cannot, I am eternally grateful to you just for being here. Not gonna cry, not doing it. <laughs> Y'all not gonna get me today, okay? This makeup just got on my face, but the eyes are shiny. <laughs> but I love y'all. I love y'all so much. I truly, 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 truly do. So. Um, I'm gonna get out of here. It's late and I have a whole video to edit. So <laughs> I'm gonna get to that. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.